Welcome to this fourth concert in our series of lunchtime concerts, Music at One with Friends of St. Matthews. Today we have something quite different as we welcome Matthew Kilner on saxophone and Neil Burse on piano to a program of jazz based around the major figure of Duke Ellington. Matthew was born and grew up in Aberdeen where he took his first degree at the university but he's recently been living in Birmingham where he attends the conservatoire and is doing postgraduate studies. He's a fast-growing reputation as one of the leading musicians of his generation. Neil was born and grew up in Aberdeen, but he went to study at the prestigious Guildhall School of Music in London, from which he's a graduate. He recently returned back to Aberdeen from where he's making his career. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Hi.
That was Take the A Train, Duke Ellington Signature Tune, but in fact it was a piece originally written by Billy Strayhorn. In this next piece, Caravan, there's a substantial piano solo. In fact, we hear it at the beginning. Neil, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about the piece and about how playing piano, as opposed to doing the duo with saxophone, affects your, your approach to this. Would you tell us a little bit about the piece? Yes, of course. Well, um, Caravan was written by Julian Teisel, who was a valve trombonist in Duke Ellington's orchestra. Yeah. Um, he was Puerto Rican, and in Puerto Rico they didn't have much money for sheet music. So in his trombone lessons, his teacher would get him to read something, and then when he'd read it successfully, they would turn the music upside down and read it again. And oh. that's where the music to Caravan originates. Uh -huh. Hence that strange diminished pattern where the intervals are also kind of going the wrong direction. Um, playing without playing solo, um, if you're playing a single line instrument like saxophone and this acoustic, you get to really enjoy the acoustic and fill the space. And much the same is true in piano, but you've got multiple voices. Mm -hmm. So you end up um, relying on yourself for interaction between your hands or parts. Um, so really playing with another instrument is easier because it gives you the inspiration and at any point you run out of ideas, you can kind of do nothing and wait for the other person to tell you what to do next. <laughs> um, so I think for something like that, there's the uh, challenge of staying true to the piece of music you're about to play without just going off on one and indulging myself. Um, and doing that yourself while, you know, keeping it true to the character and spirit of the music and building to a place where you see two people coming together to play the melody. Great. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much. Thank you. So we'll now hear Caravan.
That was Caravan. Next piece is titled In a Sentimental Mood and gives you, Matthew, an opportunity to play uh, a big solo on sax with which you begin. Perhaps you might tell us a little bit about how you put this piece together, starting from the basis of Eddington but developing from there. So yeah, it was, it was quite a challenge for me um, to play on my own, especially as acoustic, because as I'm sure you're aware, if I play anything that's kind of slightly out of tune or a wrong note, it kind of sustains for a very long period of time. So that was a, that was a challenge in itself. But um, yeah, it was, me and Neil just kind of had the idea of kind of me starting off and kind of keeping it quite open and, and spacey and not necessarily kind of sticking within a specific key really, um, which playing solo allowed me to do, you know, kind of without uh, sticking to a certain tonality. And then Neil kind of came in um, halfway through halfway through the piece um, and just really, yeah, gave it a bit of kind of direction thing. Um, but I took some inspiration from Tommy Smith and Branford Rosales, who both, uh, they do great solo concerts. Um, Tommy Smith played his back in, I think, the, the start, the turn of the millennium uh, in the Hamilton Mausoleum. And Branford Rosales played his in, I think, Grace Cathedral, which is where Duke Ellington, uh, he recorded his sacred music concert, uh, which I think, if you remember correctly, the Aberdeen Jazz Orchestra did um, a performance of in here a few years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we, we just tried to kind of keep to the uh, keep to the kind of spirit of Ellington, and um, yeah, just just kind of draw influences from those recordings as well as putting our own kind of spin on things. Really, so yeah. Okay. Thanks very much.
now we come to the final piece of today's programme, in a mellow tone. You both experienced jazz musicians and you've both played in a wide variety of venues. I wonder, has playing in this cathedral today changed anything for either of you? Has the large acoustic had any effect on the way you've played today's performance? Neil, what about you? Well, um, yes. I think um, playing in a large acoustic like this, on a, on, particularly in a piece like in a mellow tone, you want it to be uh, quite dancey and groovy and swingy, and that requires a, a great attention to detail mm -hmm. in terms of the time. Um, in an acoustic like this, it sounds gorgeous, but it would be quite difficult to stick with people and interact rhythmically. Um, uh, so, um, I think we probably did that slightly under what we'd normally do. Um, so that poses some challenges, but also some exciting opportunities. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what about you, Matthew? Has this changed for you today? Yeah, um, I think in, in jazz you're always encouraged from a young age to leave space when playing with other people. You know, there's a tendency to, I mean, I think we're all, we're all um, at fault for doing it, but you know, you're encouraged to leave space and let the other person kind of talk as it were. And I think, especially in this acoustic, you have to do that even more so. Um, so it's both, I guess, a blessing and a curse. You know, it's, it sounds great, but at the same time, if, if you don't leave space, it can also kind of be a bit muddier and things. Um, but yeah, it really, I think it just it made, a, it made the kind of sax on the piano both sing. Um, mm -hmm. The room kind of did a lot of the work for us. So I think, uh, yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Okay, that's very interesting. Thank you both very much indeed. And now we're here in a mellow tone.
Thank you for listening to this concert. We hope you've enjoyed it. The recital has been recorded at St. Marcus Cathedral here in Old Aberdeen, and we've been given special permission to use the building by the contractors because there's building work going on at the moment. And we have observed all the rules and guidelines for social distancing. We'll continue this series of Music at One with Friends of St. Marcus next week when there will be a song recital by soprano Iona Ray and on piano Tim Tricker, with a programme of music by Mozart, Herbert Howells and Chilea. I do hope you'll join us next Wednesday at 1. Meanwhile, have a good week and take care.